Sumo wrestlers, or rikishi, are the most frequently underestimated and misunderstood athletes on earth. Although the sport requires incredible feats of power, agility, and technique, sumo is thought of by most western audiences as nothing more than two fat guys running into each other. This perception is terribly unfair to the athletes, who train upwards of three to four hours a day in intense, exhausting workout routines and dedicate their lives to the martial art. Many modern martial arts, including judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and even MMA itself can trace their origins back to ancient sumo. What's more is that sumo is steeped in Japanese culture, as well as rituals and beliefs from the indigenous religion, Shinto. According to a study by Dr. Michael K. Romer in 2009, only about 10% of Japanese claim religious affiliation with any organized religion. Yet of the 330 Kyoto Prefecture residents surveyed in this study, about 54% reportedly had a butsudan, or ancestor altar, in their home, 40% had kamidana, or household Shinto shrines, and 47% either agreed or somewhat agreed that kami or hotoke exist. More recently, a study by H. Pletcher in 2017 found that 70.4% of Japanese participated in Shinto practices, though the methodology and abstract for this study were hidden behind a paywall on Statista.com. Nonetheless, the point remains that Shinto is so deeply ingrained in Japanese culture that although most would not identify as Shinto, a large portion of the population practices Shinto rituals and beliefs to some extent. With that in mind, the importance of the ties between sumo wrestling and Shinto is more clear. The demeaning light in which sumo has been portrayed by Western media is not only disrespectful to the athletes, but to the country of Japan and its storied history. With this video, I hope to draw your attention to some of the more significant connections between sumo and Shinto, as well as share the beauty that can be found in one of my favorite sports. One of the first signs of Shinto influence is the design of the Kokugikan, or sumo arena. In the center of the small stadium is the clay dohyo covered by a tsuriyane which is the massive indoor roof suspended in midair. The shape of the roof is modeled after Shinto shrines, and tassels hanging from it represent traditional deities. This roof serves no practical purpose in modern sumo, but is kept to honor the tradition and meaning behind it. Originally, this was the only roof over the dohyo, and it was held in place by four large pillars. However, as sumo was brought to television, the pillars became an issue for broadcasting and would often obstruct the view of the camera. To compensate, the pillars were replaced by four tassels and the roof was suspended by modern engineering. Each tassel represents a different season, as well as Shinto deities with Taoist roots said to protect the city of Kyoto. The green tassel represents both spring and the azure dragon of the east, Seiryu. The red tassel represents summer and the vermilion bird of the south, Suzaka. The white tassel represents autumn and the tiger of the west, Byakko. And finally, the black tassel represents winter, and the turtle of the north, Genbu. Together, these ancient gods are said to protect the sumo wrestlers from evil spirits during their explosive bouts. Sumo is announced to the city through the use of taiko. These big drums are pounded in certain rhythms to convey different messages. The practice of taiko drums extends to many aspects of Japanese culture, including kagura, a Shinto dance ritual that takes place during Bon Matsuri, a festival. Taiko has a uniquely Japanese sound, and more closely ties sumo with the culture of the country and, to a lesser extent, Shinto. The first sumo wrestlers to set the stage for the day's bouts are a yokozuna, the highest rank a sumo wrestler can achieve, as well as his two ceremonial guards, the tsuyuharai and the tachimochi. The tachimochi carries a ceremonial sword meant to ward off evil spirits. Around the waist of the yokozuna is what is called the tsuna, which is traditionally believed to host good kami. It takes the strength of six sumo wrestlers to tie this rope around the yokozuna's waist, and crafting the rope requires many more ikishi. 
Once on the dohyo, the Tsuyuharai and Tachimochi squat nearly completely still with their back straight while the Yokozuna performs the Yokozuna ring entering ceremony. I'll give you a moment to hear the sounds of the ceremony before giving a brief explanation. Thunderous, is it not? This ceremony traditionally implied wishes for a fruitful harvest. Once the sumo matches began, there are still more traditions tied to Shinto and Japanese culture. Before each match, both wrestlers drink from a ladle of power water but don't swallow. Instead, they rinse their mouths and spit it out. This is also a traditional practice before entering a Shinto shrine. Using the same type of wooden ladle, you rinse your hands, then cleanse your mouth with a little bit of purified water before spitting it back out. After this ritual, the rikishi wipe their mouths with power paper. An interesting tidbit about the Japanese word for paper is that it is a homonym for the Japanese word for God. Kami, written the same way for both words in hiragana, can either be this kanji character, meaning paper, or this kanji, meaning God. In Shinto, white paper represents purity, and this ritual is another purifying process. Shinto shrines also often have trees adorned in paper upon which wishes have been written. After they are done with the paper, the rikishi then perform chidi chozu. They squat, back straight, reach down, clap once, and extend both arms. The extension of the arms traditionally was to display that the wrestler was entering the bout unarmed, but the clapping has ties to Shinto. Before one prays in front of a haiden in a Shinto shrine, one must give a small offering such as a 5 yen coin, ring the bell, bow twice, clap twice, then bow once more. The clapping is to get the attention of the kami you are praying to as well as ward off evil spirits. In sumo, this short ritual before a bout mirrors a traditional Shinto prayer ritual. Next, sumo wrestlers grab a handful of salt from their corners and toss it, sometimes very dramatically, onto the dohyo. Salt is traditionally thought to be a purifier in Japan, and an old Shinto ritual before giving birth is to bathe in salt water and line the room in which the birth is to take place in salt. Lastly, sumo wrestlers perform shiko facing each other. This stomp squat is part of a sumo wrestler's warm-up. Most wrestlers perform these 100 to 200 times per day, or for about an hour, in complete silence. This is their warm-up. This practice is said to ward off evil spirits. The last sumo ritual I will cover in this video, though there are still others that further tie the sport to Shinto, is the bow twirling ceremony. At the end of the day, one special rikishi will be given a ceremonial samurai bow without the string. He first twirls the bow to get rid of evil spirits in the air, then makes a digging motion to get rid of evil spirits in the ground. In the early days of sumo, such a bow was given to the winner of tournaments and the ceremony was performed by the winner. I hope that I've made it abundantly clear at this point that sumo is much more complex than just two fat guys running into each other. To drive this home, however, I'd like to close with some of the most spectacular wins by smaller fighters while I list my sources. Please enjoy. A large majority of the footage and fact-checking from this video was done using NHK's Sumopedia series. NHK is Japan's public broadcasting program. Much of the live sumo footage was found on Jason's All Sumo channel. If you're interested in watching more spectacular sumo, be sure to check out this channel. Special thanks to Dr. Michael K. Romer, who may or may not be related to me. Not only did he raise me speaking and hearing Japanese, but he also provided me with his studies and expert knowledge of Shinto. I love you, itsumademo, otosan.